in an earlier video, we had talked about different ways of managing data in Docker. And at that point, I had mentioned the two common ways of doing that is using volumes and bind mounts. We had discussed about volumes in more detail at that stage. Let's talk about bind mounts now. Uh, we have seen in the previous uh, video how bind mounts are very useful for mapping a local folder into the container. Again, reminding you about the different kinds of bounds, we saw that we have the bind mount and we saw the volume and then temporary uh, FS mount. So we talked about volume in the previous video. Let's talk more details about bind mounts. So a bind mount is uh, a way of mounting a file or a directory in the host machine into the container. So thereby the file or directory that is in the host machine, uh, the contents of which will be seen inside the container. And when you have source files on your host machine, then and you are doing local development, then this is the most convenient way of mounting the source files into the container, whereby you can edit the files on your host machine and the changes will be automatically reflected into the container. So that is the reason why we would be using the bind mount. So the bind mount allows you to map a part of your local file system into the container. So that is the important part to note about how bind mount is different from a volume. A volume maps a part which is managed by the uh, Docker daemon itself, and then that part is mapped into the container. A bind mount maps a folder within your file system into the container. And to mount the uh, file, you can either use the minus V or the minus minus mount flag, just like we did with the volumes. But in, in the previous video, we saw that since we were using Docker Compose, it was very easy to specify the bind mount. We just specify uh, as part of the uh, volumes, the first uh, argument to the uh, left of the colon, we specify a local folder on our host machine. And the right side is the folder in the container to which you map the file. And then automatically when you uh, um, use Docker Compose up to start the containers, the um, local file uh, folder is mapped into the folders in your container. But if you were using the docker run command, then you would be using either the minus V or minus minus volume or the minus minus mount option to the docker run to actually do a bind mount of the uh, local folder into the container. Also, let me take this opportunity to remind you of some of the best practices for writing Docker files, a couple of which we had actually used when we created the Docker file for the local development. We were leveraging the build cache. When we designed the Docker file, we first copied the package.json file uh, into the uh, container and then did the npm install there. So that way, if there is no change to the package.json file, then it will ensure that when you rebuild the image, then the layers that are already built will be directly used from the cache there. So that will save up some time on rebuilding your image. So that is one place where we leverage Let's the build block. cache for speeding up the building the image for our container. With this quick review of the couple of concepts, we'll now move on to a next video where we will set up a local development environment for a full stack web application. <music>